More with Joe Kissel on taking control of 1Password. Today's edition of Mac Voices is supported by Collide. Collide is a fleet visibility solution for Mac, Windows, and Linux that can help you securely scale your business. Learn more at collide.com slash macvoices. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, our conversation with Joe Kissel, the author of Take Control of One Password, continues. This time, we get into some of the newest features of 1Password and why it may just be better than the previous versions of 1Password that we've used for so long. Let's go back and let Joe do the talking. If anything, I, I would think that there are, as you said, some some very compelling reasons for um, 1Password to do it the way they're doing it now, especially if they're crossing platforms. Yeah. So. so and and by the way that the fact that you are syncing to their cloud service makes possible some things that would not be possible otherwise for example what happens if i just read a story like yesterday or the day before about uh, someone who had all like she was traveling and she had all of her devices stolen her laptop her phone like all of her devices and she she used one password and so this is like okay well okay well how, how, now now how do i get into anything and it was it was a little bit of an adventure but you you get this little printable emergency kit little pdf that you can print out when you set up one password that has all the information you need to get back into your account even if literally all your devices are stolen um, you you do need more than just your username and password you need this secret key as well but it can be done. Your data is still safe and it's still accessible. If you are traveling to a country that has a reputation for poking around in digital devices at the border in the customs uh, process, um, they could uh, demand access to your, your passwords and they could get at all kinds of secrets that way. Um, one password has a travel feature where you can say, okay, um, hey, I'm about to travel. So just erase everything from all of my devices, except for these things that I've marked. And so that if your device were examined, even if you gave them your master password and they, the customs uh, people uh, examine your device, those other passwords literally wouldn't be there. There's nothing for them to find. Then you get where you're going, and you go to the one password website and you log in and you say, okay, now put them back. So um, there are there are things like that that are only possible because they have control of their own server and they can be quite valuable. It's too bad that's the world we live in, but you know, those and and these are compelling reasons for some of the changes we talked about earlier that one password has made uh, that you know yeah we have not only have have our machines changed but the world has changed and happily uh, agile bits is taking the time to and and take and and giving the thought to those kind of things to help make you safer even if you don't travel out of the country yeah yeah so i mean <sighs> I almost feel like I have to be apologetic about one password eight in a sense, or say, look, no, really, it's fine. But uh, but overwhelmingly, my my feeling about one password eight is is joy. Like I, I it makes me happy. Uh, I won't say there weren't and aren't some rough edges, but uh, largely every time I use it, like oh, thank goodness. Uh, oh, I, yeah. Oh, yeah. I have to do this thing now, and I forgot. There's a keyboard shortcut for that. Oh, that's cool. Um, so. Like I, I keep rediscovering features that are useful to me, and uh, and they're very very pleasant. And um, and you know, so the other day, the other day, I was uh, one of the one of the things I complained about in my book. One of the features that was lost in the transition from one password seven to one password eight was reordering stuff. So you have like you have a a login item and it's got you know your username and password fine might have security questions might have you know notes you've written it might have a bunch of other fields name and address whatever it might have any kind of additional stuff you've put in it and so you can add as many different fields of various kinds as you want 
And it used to be that you just, there's a little drag handle. You say, oh, I want this to be up here. I want to put this section above that section. I want to move this thing out of this section down into here. And you can just drag stuff wherever you want it. And that disappeared. Uh, but then it reappeared. And so now I've got to update my book. I've got to take that off of the list of things that aren't there anymore. And I've got to know, add a paragraph, say, oh, and by the way, if you want to reorder things, now you can. I think it's still only in the beta versions, but it's it's really easy to get the beta versions. Um, and uh, in, in any time now, it'll be rolling out to the, to the, uh, to the standard releases. But those kinds of things, um, just, just, just warm my heart because, uh, oh yeah, no, finally this, this, this irritant has disappeared and now I'm that much happier. So we've spent a lot of time. I, I don't take, I don't take what we, the discussion we just had as apologetic. I take it as informative and, you know, giving reasons and they're not excuses. They're reasons for, for the decisions that have been made. But if we have time, or if you can, talk a little bit about some of the new features. Now, you've alluded to a couple there, um, but some of the things, even even the ones that have come out since the book was updated. Yeah, so I'll mention a, a few of them. Um, sharing passwords. So it used to be that if you are part of a, a family group or a business that uses one password, then that you could share a particular vault, a particular set of, of credentials with somebody else within your family or within your company. And you can still do that. But if you wanted to share something with somebody else, the only way to do that was insecurely. That is, you could you could create a link that would give anybody kind of plain text access to your credentials, but we don't want that. We want encryption, right? So one of the new things that, that 1Password8 has is secure sharing with anybody. If they have a 1Password account, if they don't have 1Password, don't want to have 1Password, don't care about 1Password, doesn't matter. Um, this, again, is something that is enabled by having a 1Password account, by having all of your data stored on their servers. There is now a way to create a secure end-to-end -end encrypted uh, sort of channel for, for the exchange of, of passwords and other secure information. That is really, really powerful. So if I want to send my mom something or a relative or a friend, I just want them to have access to this one thing and I don't know if they use one password, I don't care. I can now create a secure link that will get that to them and uh, that's that's really wonderful. Uh, there are a lot of new features that are geared mainly toward developers and other sort of highly geeky types. So if you use SSH keys a lot, there are some new cool things you can do with those. And if you're like, what is that? Why would I care? Then just don't, don't worry about it. It doesn't affect you. Um, but, but if you happen to be the sort of person who uses SSH, you might, you might uh, use them if you are connecting to a remote uh, server, you're logging in through the terminal app or something of that sort. You, you want to have a remote command line interface. That's one reason that you might use SSH keys. Um, I also use SSH keys on, on my server, on the Take Control Books server, to protect things like uh, my database and um, even secure file transfer. So I don't, I mean, don't use FTP anymore. I mean, that's that's ridiculously insecure. No, I use I, I use SFTP, which is based on SSH, and uh, you know you can't just you can't just connect to my database server. No, 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 no. The only way to get to it is through an SSH tunnel. And this is again one of those things that, like, if you are the geeky sort that knows, then you know. And if you if these words mean nothing to you, well, just ignore them. But if you are the sort of person that <laughs> uses these things, if you if you're a developer, you use GitHub and you. I uh, want to sign every commit. Um, now, one password can handle SSH keys as well as as passwords, which means you get automatic syncing across all of your devices. And like, I go to my my file transfer app, Transmit, to to upload or download some files, and it, and, and I get a prompt: Hey, uh, log in with one password. So I use whatever you know my fingerprint or face ID to log in. Um, if I, you know, use my my 
uh, MySQL client to, to talk to my database, again, it's like, okay, you got to authenticate with one password now. And that's just like, it's like magic. It's, it's really cool if you are that, <laughs> that sort of person. Um, so, you know, I mentioned universal autofill, which is so fantastic. There's this new quick access window. There used to be this sort of like thing that was up in your menu bar called 1Password Mini. There's just this like mini window that gave you access to some of the features of 1Password, but it was a little bit cumbersome to use. Now that has disappeared. And there's this new thing that pops up that looks a little bit like a launcher, like, you know, launch bar, one of those kinds of things. Uh, but you press a keyboard shortcut command backslash by, by default. And this thing pops up where you can search in your passwords and you can, you know, copy the username, copy the password, copy the one time code with just a keystroke. Uh, and it's, it's very easy to use, very, very handy. And it works on, on all platforms. Um, I mean, there are, <laughs> there are a bunch of other things too, but, but the main message is th this isn't just the same thing with oh, now I got to do with the annoyance of subscriptions and the annoyance of accounts and the annoyance of Electron. It's not like that at all. It's a new thing with new stuff and the stuff keeps growing and getting better all the time. And um, the, the more you allow it to do for you, um, the more value you'll get from it. What can I say? I've, I've, I find 1Password both invaluable and valuable and I'm, I'm happy to pay what I'm paying for it because of all the features the constant development the focus on security um, not to, to beat in on anybody here but you know we did see um, a competitor to one password have <clears throat> what appeared to be a pretty let's just say a pretty questionable security breach that yep, if I that if, if my if my stuff were over there I'd be concerned and yep. we haven't seen that with one password. And I don't want to jinx it, but I, I think the, the way they have done their business model, I, if it happens, it happens. But I don't believe that it's nearly as likely, given the way they've approached it and all the improvements they've tried to make. I absolutely agreed. Uh, you know, it would, it would be, it'd be foolhardy for anyone in the technology industry to claim this product or this company is foolproof because... They keep making better fools, you know, uh, but uh, so like I, I, I wouldn't say anything is theoretically impervious to, uh, you know, to disaster. But there is just a, a blog post on the Agile Bits blog like today, yesterday, something about uh, about this very like basically why should you trust our security? And they, they talk in some detail about their uh, their encryption model and how they store stuff and like, okay, well, let's say the very worst thing happened and somebody somehow did break into our server and steal all the data, then what? And, um, and basically the then what is, eh, you know, it's, it's really, it's, it's impenetrable unless somebody has this mile long secret key of yours and your master password, unless somebody has those two private pieces of information from you that never ever leave your device, your stuff is just perfectly safe, which was not the case with that other company. Um, so, and of course, you know, one password, they, they have outside uh, security experts come in and do security audits all the time. And they also have a bug bounty program where they literally pay people to find security flaws with, with a, a bounty of up to a million dollars. It's like, okay, if you think you can break into our stuff, great, do that. Show us, show us the bug and we'll give you a million dollars. And, um, you know, they, they haven't given out the million dollars yet because nobody has, has, I mean, I'm, I'm sure that some small bugs have been found, but, nothing on like a catastrophic scale. So they are, they are basically tempting or daring uh, people to, to find flaws in their system for cold, hard cash um, in order to keep their stuff safer. So um, I'm, I'm really pleased about that too. Today's edition of Mac Voices is supported by Collide. Our sponsor Collide has some big news. If you're an Okta user, 
they can get your entire fleet to 100% compliance. How? If a device isn't compliant, the user can't log into your cloud apps until they fix the problem. It's that simple. Collide Patch is one of the major holes in zero trust architecture, device compliance. Without Collide, IT struggles to solve basic problems by keeping everyone's OS and browser up to date. Unsecure devices are logging into your company's apps because there's nothing there to stop them. Collide is the only device trust solution that enforces compliance as part of authentication, and it's built to work seamlessly with Okta. The moment Collide's agent detects a problem, it alerts the user and gives them instructions on how to fix it. If they don't fix the problem within a set period of time, they're blocked. Collide's method means fewer support tickets, less frustration, and most importantly, 100% fleet compliance. Visit Collide.com to learn more or book a demo. That's Collide, K-O-L-I-D-E dot com slash Mac Voices. Thanks to Collide for supporting this week's Mac Voices. I hope that, I hope that folks will take this story as the way it's intended. But I had a friend who used 1Password at my recommendation, and they lost their credentials. Mm-hmm. And they said, you know, well, can I call the company? And it's like, nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. Um, and they called the company, and the company said, nope. nope. Sorry. <laughs> that's you know, right. that's, that's kind of the whole point here of, you know, of having this stuff. So if you, if when you become a 1Password user, Um, Make sure you print out that emergency kit Joe recommended and take it and tuck it somewhere safe, you know, whether whether that's behind a brick in the basement or preferably in maybe in uh, in your safe deposit box at your bank. But it because all of her stuff was, you know, I mean, now, and don't misunderstand, she didn't lose anything. She still but she had to go through that process of resetting every single password. And, you know, who wants to do that? So it's it's a small thing. Print it out. Go place it someplace really, really safe because it is the keys to your kingdom. Right. And I've I've just remembered one other thing that probably bears mentioning. Um, you know, pass keys. <laughs> yes. uh, so, pa- pass keys. So so the, what was all all you know has been in the news it was like right around the release of Venture and iOS 16, iPad OS 16. Um, and since then, Microsoft and Google and, and other companies have, have all uh, uh, gotten on the same bandwagon. Uh, it's this concept that, hey, you know, we're all sick of passwords, so let's invent something better. Okay, let's invent something where we don't have we don't have to remember anything. We don't have to type anything. We don't have to have a password manager. We have something better. We have pass keys, and all we have to do is prove to the device we're using that yeah, we are who we say we are. Like we use, you know, Touch ID or Face ID or something of that sort. Um, and uh, magic happens behind the scenes, and you're you're you get to log in and without going into all the detail of the technology, it, it turns out to not only be way easier, but it's also more secure and more hack-proof than using usernames and passwords. So that's great. And that's just more or less the eventual future, although it requires every single website that you visit, every single app to like implement this, and that's going to be a long time coming. But you may be thinking, well, since I know that future is coming... Maybe I don't need one password after all. Maybe everything is just going to be all pass keys. And like, I hope that eventually we do get there. But even when we do get there, I'll still use one password to sync my pass keys. Because if like if I use Safari, let's say I use Safari on a Mac, and I, I, I set up an account using a pass key, that's great. That will sync to my other Mac. It'll sync to my iPhone and so forth. That's great. But if I want to use another browser, it won't sync. If I want to use a Windows PC, it won't sync. Whereas if I use one password to store my pass keys, they'll sync everywhere. So even, even if and when this passwordless future comes about, one password will still be helpful for that. It'll still be helpful for storing your credit card information, your software licenses, and all of your other secret stuff. You know, sometimes this this technology, the new technology, seem to get billed as magic. 
And you know, it's like, yeah, you won't have to worry about this or that ever again. And it really does, if, if you have any kind of technical bent, you know, it helps to go in and understand a little bit. I mean, how many times have we seen, this is the, the passwordless future? You know, it, it's your face, it's your fingerprint, it's your retina scan, it's, you yeah. know, I don't know, the hairs on your head, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, it's like, yeah, okay, if everybody could agree on this, it might be better. And passkeys may be that thing. But until it gets widely implemented, the odds are that they're going to be, I'd even venture to say a majority of services you, you, you want to use or need to use that are going to still be passwords. Yeah, I mean, you know, our, our website still doesn't support pass keys. And that's because um, I, didn't, I didn't invent our website from scratch. I took a lot of off-the-shelf tools and I put them together and I did some configuration. Then I did a bit of custom coding to add our, you know, special sauce to it. Um, but the, the tools that I use to, to present our, you know, to create and present our, our website, um, don't yet have a reliable, easy to use way to implement pass keys. And, uh, I like, it can be done, but, uh, on, on my to-do list of, you know, hundred plus things that have to happen to our website. Um, that wouldn't be like, well, I'm going to spend a month of my life making that happen. So, uh, so I'm waiting until there's a suitable tool that I can more or less just download and install, make a few little tweaks and say, okay, now, now we support it. And a lot of other developers are, and, and, and business owners are in exactly the same position. It's not that they don't want to, but, there's a lot of work, uh, often expense involved in uh, making this change. It's not like you just flip a switch and it's done. So it, it will get there, but it will be slow. It will be slow. Well, and you just said the dirty word, expense. Yeah. That you know, somewhere along the way, this is going to someone's going to have to be convinced that their website is in serious danger of being hacked or that their users are demanding that extra security. Otherwise, it'll never happen on that particular website. Yeah, so that's true. We could go on and on, because I think Joe and I are both fans of 1Password, as you can probably tell. Um, but we're going to tell you to go and buy the book, because it means that you will get so much more out of the, the subscription money you pay, out of the app, and all the improvements they're making. Um, Joe, where, what kind of pricing do we have? And of course, I know where to go get it, but why don't you tell everybody? So go to takecontrolbooks.com. Uh, there you can search our entire catalog of many, many titles on tech topics. Uh, Take Control of One Password is $14.99. If you had an older version of the book, you should already have received an email from me about how you can upgrade at a discount or look in your library and there'll be a whole little thing you can click, oh, upgrade for this price. So uh, it's 15 bucks, but boy, it, there is a ton of, let's see, it's 174 pages long. There is a ton of information here that will help you discover all these little hidden gems in 1Password, help you troubleshoot problems, um, help you understand what's going on with the technology behind it so that you feel more comfortable and more confident using it. And uh, if I do say so myself, I think it's well worth it. Great. Joe, as always, thanks for the time. I'm, I'm glad we went into the history. I'm glad we covered some of the new stuff, too. I think it's both are important in this particular case for this Absolutely. utility that we both love so much. Come back soon. I know you have a lot of irons in the fire, but it's always great to talk to you. We always learn something. Thank you. I, I will be back as soon as I can. Sounds good. Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices. I'll be back as soon as I can, too, with another guest and more information for you. Until then, and as always, thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, Consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. You will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices.
Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.